Radio show. I want to thank everyone for tuning in to the 25th Hour Radio Show. I am your host, Rob Fairless, and on the phone with me today is staff chaplain at Vanderbilt University Medical Center, as well as the lead pastor of 8th Street Missionary Baptist Church in Nashville, Tennessee, the Reverend Dr. Cordell Simpson. Reverend Dr. Simpson, thank you for taking time out of your day to join me on the show. Thank you so much, Rob. Yeah, yeah, you know, I guess the best place to start here uh, would be to give the listeners a little background information about yourself. Uh, How did you first come to know our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Well, it was uh, in uh, 1975, uh, I accepted Christ as my Savior when a a brother witnessed to me and asked me where would I go when I die, and uh, I readily said I'd go to hell. Well, he uh, led me to Christ uh, through reading John, the third chapter, and uh, where you must be born again. And after accepting Christ, my whole life changed. Any man to be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things pass away and all things become new. It became that for me. Now, when did you realize that your calling was to be a minister? It was um, after having several dreams. Uh, The Lord worked with me through dreams and visions. I dreamed that I was pastoring and preaching, and I said, no, that's not me. Uh, no one in my family is a pastor. No one is a preacher. And um, I said, that, that that's not me. And God showed me again in another dream. And this second dream, I was pastoring. And I knew then that that was what he was calling me to do. So I began to pray about it. You know, I do want to backtrack just for a, for a second here and touch on something I think a lot of new believers face. And uh, that's temptation. Uh, you know the Bible tells us after Jesus was baptized uh, by John, he went into the wilderness and, and faced temptation from Satan. And I, and I see that happening to so many new believers today, you know, giving their life to Christ, and all of a sudden Satan comes out of the woodwork and starts to tempt with perhaps old friends, old habits, you know, addictions, etc. Did you have those same type of struggles as a new believer? I did, and here's what happened. Uh, Satan knows our weaknesses. And that's why he will attack us. He will attack every believer through your weaknesses. So if you're weak in any area, you you need to seek to make that your, one of your strengths because that's where he's coming to attack you from. And he attacked me uh, through uh, not believing that God had called me to do what I'm doing. Um, and then to say that I was not worthy to do this and say that God is not with you. You know, thanks for answering that question because because I think it's so important, especially in the very beginning of someone's relationship with Jesus Christ, that they realize that they will be put to the test. I mean, Satan tested Christ himself. You best believe he'll try to test us. I agree, and the test never ends. He continues to test us. Uh, until this life is over. You know, I was watching a movie the other day about Billy Graham, uh, and it was about his younger years when he just started in the ministry. And it and it touched on how, in the very beginning at least, he struggled as an evangelist. He got extremely nervous in front of a crowd of people. He'd forget what he was going to say. You know, basic stage fright. Did you ever go yeah. through a stage like that as a, as a young minister? Well, Rob, uh, I did, and I still do. Uh, when... <laughs> When I stand on Sunday mornings to preach uh, at uh, 8th Street, I'm still nervous. I have prepared the sermon. I know that God has given me that message. But still, there's some nervousness there because you never know how it's going to turn out until after it's over. So uh, one old preacher told me, he said, when you stop being nervous, it's time to retire. <laughs> amen, amen. You know, going over your biography uh, section here on 8th Street Missionary Baptist Church website, uh, I came across a portion that I found extremely interesting, and that's where it states that you've led six missionary journeys to Nigeria. Uh, you know, without asking you to cover all six of those trips, what was those missionary experiences like? I mean, how was your team able to help in your time while you was there? One of the most blessed things that came out of that 
is that I realize how blessed we are here in the United States. Seventy uh, percent of the people there in Nigeria uh, make less than a dollar a day. We go and we carry rice uh, to the people in the bush. We carry medicine, and they are so elated uh, to receive those items because if we didn't go uh, back there where they are, no one would get there. And we had the privilege of preaching, Rob, to uh, some villages in the in Adamawa, in the Koma Mountains, of individuals who had never seen a white person in their life, and they had never heard about Jesus Christ. So we were able to lead many to Christ Hallelujah. Uh, through that ministry. Yeah, yeah. You know, like I mentioned earlier, you're you're currently a chaplain at Vanderbilt Health, uh, but this yeah. isn't your first time filling the role as a chaplain in the medical field, right? Right, right. I was first, um, when I got my uh, doctorate degree, I prayed to God and asked God, uh, what else could I do? And God said, get some clinical training. He said, you're going to need some clinical training. So I went to UT Medical Center, and there I received, uh, went through clinical pastoral education. Uh, this is a form of theological education that play, takes place on a, in an academic uh, setting, can be in a classroom, and then it also takes place in a clinical setting, which is in a hospital or healthcare facility, hospice, palliative or psychiatric facility. And you are trained there. You uh, do some on-the-job and hands-on training and classroom training. All of this is necessary in order to become a chaplain. Uh, mine I took very serious because God spoke to me. In Jeremiah 1 and 5, he says, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Mm -hmm. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee to be a prophet unto the nation. I know, Rob, just like I know who I am. I know that being a chaplain, being a pastor, is what God has me on the face of this earth to do. You know, for someone on the outside, uh, like myself, looking in on the role of a chaplain, uh, especially in a hospital setting, it seems like it could be extremely stress-filled. I mean, you're in a location where disease sickness, uh, death occur on a daily basis. It just seems like a role like that uh, could only be filled by a certain type of pastor because of the uh, the circumstances. Am I right or, or wrong on that? I agree 100%. It has to be two things. You first have to have a love for all people because you're going to encounter some of all kind of people in the hospital setting. And then secondly, it has to be a calling. Yes, it's not a profession, uh, not an occupation for me. It's a calling because when I get up in the morning, I know, and I it's not a chore, but it's a joy because I know I'm going to help someone this day get through uh, their difficult, uh, maybe, maybe the most difficult period of their life. So it's a joy. Yeah, yeah. You know, on the flip side of that, though, you also have the added ability to witness the healing power of our Savior uh, to his faithful. Uh, have you been witness to what you might consider to be miracles from working as a chaplain uh, or even outside of a hospital setting, for all that matters? Well, I have seen it in both places. I've seen it in the hospital because there has been some that we did not think would make it. And now they're living productive and fruitful lives uh, because of the um, training and uh, the caring of the medical staff for them. Um, I've witnessed many miracles uh, in the heart and vascular units uh, that I work in. Individuals have come through and come out and uh, I have talked with them and met with them later, even after these, uh, and they themselves know that it was a miracle. So tell us about 8th Street Missionary Baptist Church. Let's say you're talking to someone on the street 
who isn't a member of the church, and they say, Reverend Dr. Simpson, you know, I've really been thinking about finding a church home in Nashville. I just, I just haven't been able to nail that church home down yet. What's your, what's your church like? Can you explain it to me? Well, our church is a loving church. And what I have taught uh, our people there at 8th Street is that God loves everyone. God wants everyone to be saved. In fact, in the First Peter 3 and 9, he, it says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us, with not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So God wants everybody say God loves all people regardless of what uh, their economical background, their nationality, uh, regardless of their gender preference. God loves them. And that's the same way that we should be. So at A Street, we welcome all people. We're a multicultural uh, church that all people are welcome to come and to worship and to praise God. And we feel that that's the way that God is. God forgives us, and God welcomes us, and God gives us another chance. Not a second chance, but another chance over and over again. You know, by looking at your website right here, it looks like 8th Street has a ton of different ministry programs. You have a children's ministry, youth ministry, evangelism ministry, and a prison ministry. You know, that's awesome. Are these programs all volunteer for people listening who might be interested in helping uh, in some way at 8th Street? Well, they would be welcome to help in at 8th Street, but some of the prison ministries, they have to go through a certain criteria in order to get into that ministry. Uh, but they would be welcome to come and to uh, join with us in doing that work. They don't have to be a member uh, to do the work. They just have to come and go through the training. Yeah, so what about the personal side of uh Cordell Simpson, just Cordell Simpson, not the Reverend Doctor, just Cordell. You have any hobbies or activities that you enjoy outside of your church church duties? I do. I love horseback riding, and um, and I love my family. We uh, go on family vacations together. Uh, my biggest support is my wife and my children, and um, I love spending time with them. Uh, that's therapeutic for me because when we're together, we're laughing and we're talking about things and we're showing appreciation that we have for life. So that's therapeutic for me. So before we wrap things up, do you have any final words for the listeners out there? Anything I might have failed to mention or touch on, you know, anything like that? Well, uh, I would recommend that uh, before anyone goes into chaplaincy, that they uh, pray about it and make sure that that's what God wants them to do. Uh, and it's the same way uh, with uh, pastoring. Uh, you must be a good follower if you're going to be a good leader. And uh, be ready for the long haul in both because it's a great degree of training that is a necessity uh, because people deserve our best and they need it. And for those out there interested in going to the 8th Street Missionary Baptist Church website, I almost forgot to do that, make sure you go to www.esmbchurch.org, www.esmbchurch.org. Well, Reverend Dr. Simpson, it has been an absolute honor sharing the last few minutes with you. Uh, I've been blessed because of it. Thanks for taking time out of your day to do this. Thank you, Rob. Look forward to hearing from you in the future.